In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Beloved in the Lord, as we gather together this beautiful evening to enter into these sacred mysteries of our redemption in Christ, let us so prepare ourselves to encounter our Lord in his word and sacrament during this Mass as we call upon his divine mercy and acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Lord. your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Quoheleth. Vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. 
Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill, and yet to another who has not labored over it, he must leave property. This also is vanity and a great misfortune. For what profit comes to a man from all the toil and anxiety of heart with which he has labored under the sun. All his days, sorrow and grief is his occupation. Even at night, his mind is not at rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, 
then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death then the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another, since you have not taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do, for I do not have space to store my harvest? And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now, as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus it will be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, how very good it is that we are able to gather together on this beautiful Saturday evening for this Vigil Mass on this 18th Sunday of the year. And to all of our visitors and guests who join with us 
from the St. Louis area and from Kansas and from everywhere else, a very warm and cordial welcome to you as well. It is truly a blessing and a gift to be able to have Mass with all of you this evening. Now, dear friends, this evening we have a unique experience. The unique experience is that of hearing from the book of Ecclesiastes on a Sunday. This is the only time in the, the whole liturgical cycle that we get even a snippet of the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, some of you might be familiar with uh, this book uh, by another name, namely that of Koheleth. And this Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, or Koheleth, and the, uh, the word Koheleth means one who is of an assembly, the, the kahal in in uh, Hebrew means the assembly. And so Koheleth is like a leader or someone who is a leader, uh, a gatherer together of the Lord's people. Now, in this case of the book of Ecclesiastes, later on, that leader of the assembly identifies himself as being King Solomon. So this is uh, purported to be one of the, the books that King Solomon wrote, in addition to other books uh, of the wisdom literature. Now keep in mind that the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, are more of the, well, the, the passing along the, the, the historical, and then we get into uh, Chronicles and Kings, which flesh out the real history after uh, the Lord has called together his people. But then there is this whole section of the Bible called the wisdom literature that includes the book of Job, the Psalms, Sirach, Song of Songs, and Proverbs. But each of them, in their own way, are trying to indicate how it is that we can come to that wisdom of God, how it is that we as human beings can come to a knowledge of God. Now, that might not seem like the case in our pericope and our snippet this evening from Ecclesiastes, because it sounds like a uh, just a corrugent old man, doesn't it? Vanity of vanities. All things are vanity. Now, when he says vanity here, don't be thinking of uh, just looking in the mirror and being vain or having vanity in that way. Rather, the sense of the word is just kind of, what's it worth? It, the, the, the sense that the, the word carries with it is kind of like a bubble or a you know, just an effervescent fog or a cloud, kind of like the incense at the beginning of Mass, it just kind of dissipates. What's the point of it? You know, all things just fade. And he gives this example. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill, all good things, and yet to another who has not labored over it, he must leave his property. This sounds like an old man after a long life, right? He's probably sitting in uh, perhaps a, a care facility, thinking back of all of his labors and exploits in this life, and thinking, and I have to leave it to them? What's it worth? What was the whole purpose of it? And yet, my dear friends, before we think that this odd book of the Old Testament is just King Solomon in the nursing home, who's looking at life through a, a certain jaundiced eye, remember with me that in our Catholic tradition, there are various ways that we are able to come to know God, correct? There isn't just a single way in which we come to know God. So traditionally, other ways are spoken of as being the, the illuminative way that through wisdom, through intelligence, making use of the gray matter between our ears, we can come to discover the things and the ways of God in and through the world. Another way is that of the unitive way, that God desires to draw together back into unity the fragmented and divided world and all of creation that was separated and fragmented by sin. So there is that desire for God to gather together in unity. And any place or any time we come across a dynamic that draws together 
that which is good and holy and upright, that is really pointing toward the ways of God. So we have the illuminative, the unitive, but then there's also the purgative meaning. That one way that we as human beings can come to know the things and the ways of God is by keeping the things of this world in their proper perspective. Considering what is our relationship with the goods of this earth, as beautiful, as wonderful as they may be, are any of them our ultimate end? No, is the answer. So through a purgative way of life, we keep our relationships with the things of this world, as important as they may be, in their proper perspective. And that, my dear friends, I would suggest to you, is the interpretive key for better understanding the book of Ecclesiastes. That this is not just an old curmudgeon of a man looking back on life and regretting things, but rather one who is asking us to look at our relationship with the things of this world. And it sets the stage for our gospel passage from the 12th chapter of the book, or of the gospel, rather, of St. Luke, wherein Jesus is asked by someone, Teacher, tell my brother to share his inheritance with me. <laughs> How often do we hear that? You know, there's that expression, where there's a will, there's a, a way. Have you heard the Polish expression? Where there's a will, there's a relative. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's going to be someone who's going to be looking for their inheritance, wanting their part of what is supposed to be coming to them. <laughs> it was the case during our Lord's life, and it's the case even today. How much strife exists in families and among siblings when it comes to what they're going to inherit. Why is it, how is it that we in this beautiful country of ours have arrived at a point in having an expectation that when a loved one dies, we're going to get something? That does not exist elsewhere in the world, my dear friends. And yet, how is it that it has become part and parcel of the fabric of the nation in which we live that we expect we're going to get something, and we're miffed if we don't. Might it be because of our greed as a people? And remember with me what greed is. Greed is that insatiable desire for things, whatever it may be. It can be money. It can be property. It can be influence, it can be comfort, it can be anything of this world. And greed is that insatiable, meaning it can never be satisfied, desire for things. And so, Jesus, like the good and any good physician, doesn't just say to us, stop being greedy, like knock it off. Rather, he tells us how to as he gives us his beautiful par parable, wherein, you know, right before it, he says, take care to guard against all greed. For though one may, may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. And then he gives us these important points of how we can guard against greed. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. That's the first important spiritual point for us all. This man who had a bountiful harvest, where did it come from? It was from the land. Now, yes, it is true that he as a farmer or one who to uh, tilled and toiled, he did put energy and effort into that. He was a good farmer, but ultimately it was the land who gave the harvest. The first important spiritual lesson for us all in our relationship with the things of this world and guarding against greed is remembering where all good blessings come from. They come from God. No matter what way of life, no matter what our occupation may be, all blessings come from God. Yes, it is true that the Lord delights in our participation in that ongoing work of creation. He delights in us 
laboring for that which is good, but fundamentally everything good comes from him. The problem is, if we don't have that right relationship with the things of this world, we begin to, th to think that, well, this is mine. This is my possession. And we forget that everything we have, even that which we have worked for, is ultimately on loan to us. We are stewards of God's good gifts. We are not the owners. Hence, that is why we can find ourselves in the situation that we do today, where there are some people, and please pray for them, who say that it is my body, and what I do to my body is my decision. No one else's, not even Almighty God. You understand what I'm saying here, dear friends? that our own life and everything that we have in this world is on loan to us. And so none of us are in a position to make use of it in a capricious manner. Rather, we are but stewards of God's good gifts. So the first important spiritual lesson for us all is remember where the good and the blessings of this life come from. But then this rich man says, what shall I do? I don't have space for it. Now, I realize none of you are in a situation like this. You, all of you, are able to park all of your vehicles in the garages that you have, correct? That none of your garage space is used for storage, is it? <clears throat> okay, and you say, yes, we can park our vehicles in the garages at our home because we have extra storage space elsewhere that we rent. And this is a second important spiritual lesson for us all, is to remember that the abundance of God's many good gifts and blessings, if we hold them as being our possessions, and if we become so attached to them that we have to hold on to them all, they create problems. They create extra burdens for us. They create worries and preoccupations of what are we supposed to do with this? We have so much. What are we going to do? And has the thought of sharing charitably with those who go without ever crossed our minds? So remember where the blessings come from, but also remember that they come with a responsibility that can sometimes burden us. But the solution that this rich man in this parable comes up with is that he's going to tear everything down and build up bigger. Now, that sounds like a successful business exploit, right? You're making money, you have a successful harvest, your property and all that is flourishing. Why not build it bigger? And that night, the Lord says, your life will be demanded of you. But before we get to that point, remember what the man says. He says, now I've stored up all these good things. Now I can relax. All of life is coming to me. Eat, drink, be merry. Take for granted the life that God has given to me. And in this, the third important spiritual lesson for us all is not to become so comfortable with the things of this world that we lose sight of our ultimate destiny. We begin thinking that we've got all these good things. Now we can relax, go into autopilot. We have stored up enough for the future. And we fail to remember that our life is not our own and that we will be asked to make an accounting of it. Now, my friends, the Lord completes this parable by saying, thus will it be for all who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich in what matters to God. Now, what matters to God, my dear friends? What matters to God is that we continue to grow in the things of God, in the virtues, in the practices of divine mercy to each and every individual we encounter. That we are charitable in caring for those who are in need. That we are compassionate with those who are in need of compassionate love and understanding. That we are patient with those who can otherwise be avoided and kicked to the curb that we inculcate the divine realities of heaven here on earth. And as St. Paul expresses it, that we seek 
that which is above where Christ is seated. Think of what is above, not that of, that of earth. Now, this is not at all that the things of this world do not matter, that they aren't important, that we shouldn't be good stewards of God's gifts, but rather to remember the bigger picture of this life and the blessings therein that God has entrusted to us for his greater glory and honor and for the good of one another. In conclusion, not so many years ago, there was a very wise and sage cardinal archbishop in our country, and his death was a loss to the theological and intellectual uh, life of the church here in the States. Cardinal Francis George of Chicago summed it up with this very apropos and pithy line when he said, the only thing we take with us when we die is what we have given away. The only thing we take with us when we die is what we have given away. Just as everything we have has been received from the Lord, so too what we take with us before the throne of God is how we have made use of them and how we have given them away for God's greater glory and honor and for the good of our fellow brothers and sisters. My dear friends, as we soon prepare to approach this altar to receive the greatest gift that we can receive this side of heaven, let us pray that this most holy Eucharist may strengthen, fortify, and sanctify us to not take for granted the blessings of this life, but always desire to store up that which endures forever, the treasures of heaven given to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Let us rise and together renew the faith of the Church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Entrusting ourselves and all of our needs to our loving and merciful Lord, in faith, let us present our petitions. For the Church, that God will protect and purify it so that its work may prosper. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of our parish, that we may follow the gospel and reject a desire to possess more than we need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who lack food, clothing, or home, that disciples of Jesus possess a generous spirit and be inspired to give from their abundance to meet their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for our nation that its citizens seek not to store up treasures, but to grow rich in what matters to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died this week, especially Carolyn Shepker and Joseph Grothoff, that they may know God's love and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, source of all goodness, life, and blessings, as we, your people, gather together and bring before you these our needs, we ask that in your love and mercy you hear and answer them. For as always, we bring these prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus, who is our Lord in life, now and forever. Let us sing together, number 688, O God, our help in ages past, number 688. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of the spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sana, O Sana in the highest, blessed is he who To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Take away the sins 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Let us sing together number 712, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, number 712.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And let us sing together number 636. Now thank we all our God, number 636.